If you're holding an acoustic guitar and trying to channel the depths of your Irish heritage, there is a solid chance that alcohol may be involved. So now is as good a time as any to kind of go over some of the cornerstones of Irish music and how you can play them. Now, uh, the, an entire culture's worth of music is impossible to go over in one video, but I just wanted to do maybe a couple simple things that you can do strumming-wise. Rhythm is like a really important part of Irish music. So strumming-wise, maybe like a little lead thing, and then an alternate tuning at the end that we can try. So the first thing to sound, or to make something sound Irish, is to play it in 6-8 time, right? So all that means is you just count to 6 for every bar, right? So instead of 1, 2, 3, 4, we're gonna count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And this is different than counting to 3 twice. When you count to 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, that downbeat is always gonna be on the 1. So for example, like 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. We're gonna do what's called a jig, and now a jig is commonly in this 6 8 timing. And if you've ever tried to dance a jig, right? and I know that you've tried to dance a jig, is it's all about going back and forth, right? So if we count to six, and you think of like a two move thing, like the elbow is accented on the one, and the punch is on the four. It'd be like one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Guitar strumming wise is really the same principle, except instead of using your arm, we're gonna use the direction of your pick, or however, if you're using your thumb, just your, your down and your up strokes, right? So we're just gonna do a G major chord because a lot of Irish music is in G or the key of D, but we're gonna do a G right here, right? So instead of going one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, that's a really steady beat. There aren't any accents. We're gonna add accents to make it more lively and make it seem uh, more Irish. So uh, we're gonna accent the one and the four. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, and all I'm doing is I'm adding a dynamic on the one and the four, right? So the, the one is the first downstroke, and the four is gonna be an upstroke. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you're really kind of hearing the back and forth movement of that rhythm. Now to make it even more dynamic, I don't wanna strum the entire chord. I wanna start out with the lower part of it, and this is just dynamic strumming in general. You can do this for any type of music. And then I'm gonna focus on the top part of, this, of the chord. Now when I say the low part of the chord, I'm kind of focusing on the bottom three strings, right? So like one, two, three, one, two, three, right? Down, up, down. I'm not getting the whole thing, I'm just getting the low part. Down, up, down, and then for the four, five, six, I'm gonna get up, down, up. So down, up, down, up, down. And eventually your muscle memory is gonna to start to feel that switch, that swinging in the hand, and you can do it a lot faster. If you wanna palm mute it a little bit, it can sound really good too. And then you can change chords, just like a G to a D. Okay, so if you start playing things in 6-8, it'll kind of give it a little bit of an Irish feel. A lot of Irish music is in that time signature, as it's called. Now, I want to do something where we put a little bit of lead on top of it. And we're just going to use a really simple scale just to see how it coordinates with the beats that we're using, right? So we're going to start on the 12th fret of the G string, and which is also a G. And we're just going to play the first four notes in the key of G, which is a G, an A, a B, and a C, okay? So G is going to be here. A is gonna be the 10th fret on the B string, B is gonna be the 12th fret on the B string, and C is gonna be the 13th fret, right? So we're gonna play them in order. One, two, three, four. We're just gonna use these four notes. We're gonna keep it really simple. Now, again, we're counting to six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So if we assign every beat one of these notes, one, two, three, all right, we're gonna start right there and have that be the first three, the first three notes. And then we're gonna have the next three, the four, five, six, starting on the second note of this four note series, okay? So we have a G, A, B. Then we're gonna back off and go A, B, C. G, A, B, A, B, C. This is also a great way to practice your alternate picking. So instead of going down, 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 I'm going down, up, 
down, up, down, up. So every change of direction on every single beat, okay? So all together we're gonna have the first six notes, then. So again, we're just kind of going backwards through the scale. There's our next group of three, which is a B, A, G, A, B, A. Okay, so we have two six note parts. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and we can kind of switch them around any way you want, but for this example, I'm just gonna have kind of like a, an alternating part. So the first one is. And I'm ending on the second note, right? And then the second time I do it, I'm gonna end on the G note, which I'm resolving the phrase because I'm ending on a G. So that's why the first time when I end it, I'm gonna end on an A, okay? So one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm ending on the A so there's no resolution yet. The second time I do it, I'm just ending on the G. That's why it sounds like that phrase is closed, right? So now if we do that over, a dynamically strummed, it'll sound like this. So I've just got this like really simple loop prepared, which is just a G major chord over and over again, right? And then you can kind of start playing around with the G major scale or whatever scale you want. Really just go back and forth like that. And what I'm doing is I'm matching beats with the guitar, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then after, if you keep doing that forever, it'll never ever seem to stop. That's why if you notice, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm kind of letting that one note take three beats in a row and that's giving some space. And that's something that traditionally uh, in Irish music, maybe like a flute or a violin or something else would play this, but you can easily do it on an acoustic guitar. Another thing synonymous with Irish music is the use of an alternate tuning called dadgad. Now I personally have a very complicated relationship with alternate tunings because I am so lazy when it comes to down tuning my guitar in any way. I've even like, bought guitars specifically to keep in another tuning to help to keep myself from keeping it in anything but standard tuning but then eventually those guitars just get tuned to standard anyways and i never do it anyways but this is my irish heritage so we're actually going to take the effort to tune down to dadgad it's not that hard it seems like it's a monumental task but it takes you two seconds right so we're going to take the low e string tune that down to a d the next three strings are the same the b string is going to be tuned down to an a and the high E string is also going to be tuned down to a D. So it'll sound like this. Now, it's a very open tuning, and you can really do some beautiful things with this. Not just in Irish music, but in anything. And uh, we're going to go through a couple different chords and make a chord progression that we can play in 6-8 in like a jig time to make something that doesn't sound quite like a jig, but something that's more just kind of Irish traditional. So, uh, like I said before, the key of D major is a really popular one in Irish music, and that's what's great about this dadgad tuning because you're always, you can drone a D, right? By just hitting the D string. That's just, I mean, you can even just play it open. And it's creating a suspended sound, a suspended chord, right? So we're gonna make a D major type chord by putting our pinky on the fifth fret of the A string, and then our pointer finger on the second fret of the G string. And now if we play all six, we're getting a D major chord, right? So we can drone this chord doing the same thing, dynamic playing by hitting the root note, like that. Same thing, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. And another thing that you can do to maybe improve your strumming a little bit is on that downstroke right there, I'm kind of raking the strings. I'm not hitting them all individually, I'm just letting my pick fall down the strings. And you can get a sound like. So I'm kind of replacing the one, two, three with a. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, however you want to count it, right? And notice how I'm really hammering that D.
now we're gonna go to another chord. So in this uh, tuning, an A major chord would be right here, right? A lot of the A major is the same because we only changed three strings. So open A, 2D, and 2G is gonna be the same. But I'm gonna try to bar all of the bottom four strings and then put my pinky here on the fourth fret of the B string. Even though it's tuned to A, I'm still gonna call it the B string, right? So, so this is like an A major chord, right? So the progression we have so far is this D to an A. And the next one we're gonna do is a regular B minor, which is pointer finger 2A, ring finger 4D, pinky 4G. And if we keep the bottom open, the, the alternate tuning is giving us like a B minor seven. And then I'm gonna open up the root note to get another A, right? So far we have D, A, B minor seven with the open root. And then we're gonna go to a G and this is one of my favorite ones in Dag Yad. It's kind of like a G major seven voicing, right? So your middle finger is on the low string. Your ring finger is right behind it on the fifth fret. Your pointer finger is grabbing that F sharp, which is the fourth fret of the D string. And then your pinky is gonna be the fifth fret of the B string. And you're gonna get, and you're gonna get all of them, right? So here are our chords. We've got the D to an A to a B minor seven with the open root the G major seven. So now if we put them all together as a progression in six eight with a little bit of that raking on the downstroke, we can get something that sounds like this. just kind of experiment with uh, this tuning. Alternate tunings are great to just kind of maybe take existing chord shapes and see how they sound, but if you kind of apply some of these principles, the 6-8 timing, the jig technique, and dadgad, you can create some really cool Irish sounding music.